you know, I look at it like this. If Malik would have waited another second, I might not be here doing an interview with you right now. If he would have waited another half a second, I might have a hole in my head. He might have a hole in his head. He might have a hole in his arm. Have you ever heard of the time Snoop Dogg was on the run from the police? Yeah, not only did Snoop Dogg come within a second of losing his life, Slippery Snoop actually gave O.J. Simpson and his white Bronco a run for their money. As Snoop evaded the cops for a week before he was finally arrested and eventually found not guilty. We the jury in a bubble tile action find a defendant, Calvin Brodus, not guilty of the crime of murder in the first degree. In violation of Penal Code Section 187, a felony, as charged in count one of the indictment. Dated February 13, 1996, Charles B. Foster, four person. The dog father had to bring together the dream team to ensure he was acquitted of the murder charges. Snoop was represented by the lawyer who helped O.J. Simpson avoid prison by dropping the bars, if it doesn't fit, you must acquit Johnny Cochran and other attorneys such as David Kenner and Marcia Marissi. Snoop's trial got almost the same attention from the media that O.J. Simpson's case got because he was one of the men that took gangster rap mainstream and he was perhaps the biggest hip-hop artist in the world during the period. You see, back in 1993, Snoop Dogg was just coming off helping Dr. Dre create one of the greatest hip-hop albums ever, The Chronic. Snoop was truly at the peak of his powers during this time. Then he began recording another classic, his debut album, Doggy Style. And it was during this period that Snoop Dogg found himself in the middle of an incident that almost ended his life and career. Although the dog father was one of the biggest names in the rap game, he was still involved in the streets. Because like Snoop himself once said, you can take the boy out of the hood, but you can't take the hood out of the homie. Yeah, back in 93, Snoop Dogg was really about that life, and he was not the squeaky clean media mogul you know now. Snoop was a member of the Rollin' 20 Crips gang. He lived in an apartment complex in the Palms neighborhood of West LA, just at the intersection of Vinton Avenue and Woodbine Street. And this was where Snoop Dogg's life took a drastic turn. On the 24th of August, 1993, Snoop and his driver, McKinley Lee, aka Malik, got into an altercation with Philip Waldemarium. Waldemarium was actually a member of the Crips, just like Snoop Dogg. However, he belonged to another set. Philip Waldemarium was a member of the Buy Yourself Hustler Crips, a Crips set that was affiliated to the Rolling 60 Crips. And even though he was an immigrant who came from Ethiopia, Waldemarium was also one of those gang members who had racked up several charges and you don't want to mess with. And just before the incident with Snoop, he had been in prison for firing a gun in a schoolyard. And even before what happened in August 1993, Waldemarium and Snoop Dogg already had a history. See, Snoop's lawyers claimed that Waldemarium had previously assaulted and threatened the rapper. But on the day of their last altercation, their problems began because of a hand sign. While driving by, someone flashed a rival gang sign at Waldemarium in an area that he deems his territory. And if you don't know anything about gang culture, then you will understand that this is considered quite disrespectful. So Waldemarium read by yelling, fuck y'all, and he told his ops, you are in by yourself hustlers' territory. This pissed off a lot of people, and according to prosecutors, several people jumped into Snoop's car and they followed Waldemarium and his folks. But after some time, Waldemarium and his goons lost the people who were chasing them. However, Snoop stated that that's not exactly what happened. See, the dog father emphasized that they were never following Waldemarium, and their deadly altercation happened later in the day when he and his bodyguard were heading to the studio. After the first altercation, Snoop Dogg was riding in the hood with his bodyguard Malik when he saw Waldemarium having some food with his homies on a picnic bench at a nearby Palms Park. Snoop decided to stop by, but Waldemarium showed he wasn't scared at all. He said to Snoop, I ain't sweating you, but I'm just letting you know where you at. Translation, you are on my turf, and if you F around, you just might find out. And this is when Snoop's bodyguard stood up and popped his head out of the top of the convertible Jeep. Snoop's friend Sean Abrams, who was also in the car, then yelled, You ain't letting us know anything, punk. While the Merriam replied with, Oh, I am a punk? He then reached for his waistband, about to pull out his strap. 
However, Snoop's bodyguard Malik was proactive and emptied five bullets into Waldemarium before he could use his gun. Snoop Dogg then put the pedal to the metal and sped off from the scene. Meanwhile, Waldemarium was left lying dead with his own blood, becoming a pool for him to lie in. And if you think Mr. Snoop Doggy Dog was going to turn himself in, then think again. Yep, Snoop did the race before even Tay-K was born. He told the management about the incident, but Suge Knight allegedly decided they could use the situation to their own benefit. Suge Knight wanted to use Snoop Dogg being on the run and his murder case as publicity for the debut album Doggy Style. And going by Doggy Style's first week numbers, Suge's plan was successful. The death row boss found a way for Snoop Dogg to avoid the cops and appear at the 1993 VMAs before turning himself in. So while Snoop was at the VMAs doing interviews with Dr. Dre and even presenting the award for best R&B, everyone knew he was a wanted man. And the wanted man was flexing at the award right there on national TV. So one night he was posing for the cameras, and the next he was behind bars. Snoop Dogg was arrested by the LAPD after the award, but it didn't take long for Suge to get him out of there. Suge put up a $1 million bond to get Snoop Dogg out of jail. Snoop was then placed on house arrest until the trial began. However, this trial didn't start until two years later, and within that time, Snoop Dogg released Doggy Style on the 23rd of December 1993 three months after Waldemarium was shot. And here's why I told you that Suge's plan to use the case as publicity for the album was successful. See, Doggy Style sold 806,000 copies in its first week. If you don't know how crazy those numbers are, then you must know that no other hip-hop album had ever done such numbers. And even after this, not even Pac or Biggie could beat these numbers at the peak of their careers. Snoop held this record for seven years until it was broken by Eminem in 2000. Those first week numbers were also boosted by Snoop's highly notorious track, Murder Was The Case, which of course was about his murder trial. Fans went crazy for this song, and you should give it a listen. It's Snoop Dogg at his best. Snoop even went as far as releasing a semi-autobiography short film with the same title. The movie was directed by none other than Dr. Dre, and even the great Charlie Murphy starred in this movie. You could say Snoop used this film to shift public opinion in his favor, and also influence the jury, as this movie portrayed him as essentially the victim of the incident. This was a pretty smart move, because the short film was released before the court even presented the case to a jury. Snoop used the film to seize the narrative before the trial started. Snoop Dogg even performed at the 1994 VMAs and stated live on stage that he is innocent while performing, of course, Murder Was The Case. Murder was the case that they gave me. I'm fresh about my coma. I got my mama and my daddy and my homies in my coma. It's gonna take they gave me. I'm innocent. I'm innocent. What essentially helped Snoop Dogg in this case is that his lawyers were able to prove that the LAPD had shown a level of incompetence in their investigation. See, the LAPD lost the shell casing from the murder weapon, while the Merriam's bloodied clothes and Snoop's lawyers also suggested that the prosecutors had destroyed evidence. Prosecutors called 24 witnesses to the stand to back their claim that Snoop Dogg ordered his bodyguard to shoot Waldemarium. And I assume that this must have confused the jury, because 24 witnesses means 24 different accounts of what led to the shooting. The Dog Father's lawyers called only one witness, and they were able to make the prosecutor admit that they had destroyed the evidence. And in February 1996, Snoop Dogg and his bodyguard McKinley Lee were found not guilty. Prosecutors then charged Snoop with manslaughter and accessory to murder charges, but this eventually ended in a mistrial. He knew he was not guilty. He knew that. He knew McKinley Lee acted in self-defense. McKinley Lee has never, ever, ever, ever been involved with gangs. I have. McKinley Lee has never been involved with gangs. 